Hello folks and welcome back to my channel. In this video we will talk hardware and have a look at all the cool things you can get to enhance your simulator experience. So, see you in a bit. Why don't we start this by having a look at the minimum hardware requirements that are provided to us by Eagle Dynamics. You will find them again when you uh, navigate to your DCS World uh, versions here. Let's take the stable uh, standalone here. You will get um, your minimum hardware uh, requirements. Now let me tell you already that um, by now, May 2023, these are heavily outdated or really the absolute uh, bare minimum that uh, you you should have to be able to run DCS World. Now here uh, it says for example for the low graphics settings, I, I don't know, here it says uh, 8, 8 gigabytes of, of RAM, uh, uh, GTX 760, that is just really, even on a, on a very very low end system, that is just really not enough anymore. I would say that here for the high graphics settings um, at the time that also applies for uh, for medium and, and also low, you really should have at least 16 gigabytes of RAM and uh, let's say from the video card something from the NVIDIA GTX uh, 1000 uh, series. Now here are uh, also important the recommended VR system requirements. Uh, if you are like me for example who is uh, almost ex exclusively flying in VR. I can also already tell you that the uh, GeForce uh, GTX 1080 that I was running that uh, five years ago and it uh, served me well but at the moment it is just really not enough anymore. You should really uh, have something at least from the from the let's say from the RTX 2070 uh, upwards and definitely more than uh, 16 gigabytes of RAM. Uh, I would recommend really as it says here for heavy missions and especially for the for the multiplayer 32 uh, gigabytes of RAM and the video card with uh, 8 gigabytes of VRAM that is at the moment really the the absolute uh, minimum since DCS world is uh, not really very uh, optimized um, only it's only recently that it supports uh, multi-threading and that's so far only in the in the open beta so uh, in order to run DCS world as well as uh, any other kind of uh, flight simulator you really need uh, a very uh, potent uh, gaming PC now uh, I would say if you really if you play it on a on a full HD uh, display it doesn't need to be high-end but it needs to be somewhere in the medium uh, price range. I will quickly tell you uh, my system at the moment. It is also uh, at this point already a little bit uh, out, outdated. Um, I'm also running an RTX uh, 2080 uh, Super, which is uh, just enough to give me a smooth gaming experience in uh, DCS World uh, Virtual Reality. But I can feel more and more how uh, this video card is also already uh, at the limits and I will soon be forced to update, even with the currently extremely uh, high prices for uh, GPUs. Um, I have an Intel Core i7 uh, 12700K, uh, I believe. I run uh, 32, uh, 32 gigabytes of, of RAM and I have my uh, DCS World installed on a 500 gigabyte uh, M2 uh, SSD. Now that's basically everything uh, you need to know about uh, the DCS World hardware uh, requirements. Um, as I said already, everything you need is a potent uh, gaming PC and um, everything else comes then uh, with, with experience and you will see uh, what you need and what you don't. Now, uh, the, more important, um, the more important topic is uh, what kind of uh, input devices you need. Um, let's start here uh, with, the, with the more low-end uh, devices um, from uh, Logitech. Um, let me mention here first, it is, it is possible, uh, at least the uh, possibility is offered by uh, DCS World to fly with mouse and keyboard. Uh, I can tell you already it is uh, not possible to fly uh, a flight simulator aircraft with mouse and keyboard. Um, it is not intended to do so and I won't give any more uh, information about that. Um, you, should, you should at least 
at least have a, a joystick like a single a single joystick like a Logitech uh, Extreme 3D uh, Pro which I also once uh, started to to fly with um, it really offers the the bare minimum you need it is a solid uh, platform it has been out there for uh, many years but uh, also for more uh, advanced aircraft it is then just uh, not enough anymore you will need something called uh, a HOTAS and we already see here a few uh, options provided by Logitech um, this here is what I'm using at the moment, the uh, X56 uh, Rhino. It is in the, in the community, it is uh, somewhat uh, controversial because the overall build quality is uh, not very high end. It is mostly made from uh, plastics. And uh, if you don't use a powered uh, external USB hub, you may suffer from uh, ghost inputs uh, because of lack of uh, power. Uh, nonetheless, uh, I think that the uh, X56 has a very uh, gr uh, great uh, price to uh, performance uh, ratio. It is really, uh, there is no other HOTAS in that price range that gives you uh, so many different um, buttons and axes. As you can see, it is a split throttle, so you can use it to uh, control two, two engines. Uh, um, separately, um, you really have like all the all the head switches here on your HOTES and it's really just uh, everything you need. But uh, as I said already, um, the overall uh, build quality is uh, not that that uh, great. Now, also these two options here, the the X fifty two is quite quite popular uh, among uh, flight simulators. Now I can also say you can you can uh, go with these and. You won't uh, really uh, regret it. Now, something else that uh, you will you will certainly need at some point, and for me, for example, it took way too long to realize that that you uh, need something, uh, some rudder pedals like uh, these here, for example. Uh, also, somewhere in the middle from the from the price range, of course, there are always uh, more expensive options. Rudder pedals are really important, uh, not only to control the rudder of your aircraft. But especially with uh, warbirds and other older aircraft that uh, don't have something like a good nose wheel steering, you need the rudder pedals to control the wheel brakes of your aircraft. And with many warbirds, the wheel brakes are the only option to uh, to steer the aircraft while uh, taxiing on the ground. So uh, you should really invest rather into a joystick, uh, a, a HOTAS and rudder pedals instead of a very expensive HOTAS uh, without rudder pedals. Now let's climb up the ladder a bit here to uh, also quite a famous uh, manufacturer of these simulator devices. Uh, we are now at the Thrustmaster homepage and you will find here something that uh, many TCS World pilots use and it is the Thrustmaster A10 uh, Warthog stick. Now it's basically a replica of the of the joystick and uh, and the thrust thrust lever here of the real uh, A10C Warthog. Um, it is uh, of much higher build quality than the Logitech options I showed you before. It is very popular, and the great thing is that uh, you can remove the the stick here from the from the base and uh, replace it with a flight stick of let's say uh, for example what do they offer here of the FA18 or the F16 for example. So uh, yeah, the Trustmaster pro products they are already a bit more. Um, higher priced but um, this for example or also here the rudder pedals they are manufactured um, mostly out of metal and they have a much more uh, solid um, feeling and you will probably have them longer than the products I showed you before. Now there are three more uh, manufacturers I want to show you that really offer more of the advanced uh, simulator gear here. Uh, VKB would be like one of those very popular at the moment. They are uh, Gladiator series here. These are quite almost already a high-end high-end simulator um, Simulator controls uh, for a not not very high price like the gladiator stick here as you can see and the and the throttle They really have uh, reasonable prices 
just keep in mind for example this this um this uh, throttle here it is it is not a split it is a single throttle so uh it might give you some disadvantages when flying in a two engine um, jet for example now what we also have here uh, quite famous also in the community is a uh, verpil Verpil uh, really has already also quite high-end stuff. You can see here, for example, their their uh, Mongoose uh, throttle here comes quite pricey at three hundred fifty dollars, and that is only only the throttle here. Now, if in addition you also want the stick and the base, you easily end up spending up to seven hundred euros for your Hotas. Same applies here, and this is probably one of my favorite manufacturers. The Win wing, uh, they really have it all. They have the whole package, uh, for example, here a uh, full replica of the F16s throttle and stick, as you can see here, uh, quite expensive at uh, 780 uh, dollars. But this really looks like, and uh, everything is exactly very, very you would find it in an actual uh, F16, for example, here the, the throttle uh, detents, for example. Of course, some people really, they take it to the next level. They uh, combine all of those available um, gear options that I just showed you and uh, they might have something like this at home. Well, what's cooler than uh, having your own self-made A10C cockpit with those uh, fancy looking uh, three uh, screens here, uh, a helmet, the, the joystick, everything is like um, right on spot. But let me tell you already this, uh, something like this might look cool but uh, when it comes to immersion nothing can beat a good uh, virtual reality headset I already uh, mentioned this in an uh, earlier earlier uh, video once you start flying in VR there is really a uh, no way uh, back really um, it gives you uh, it, it, it turns you from a spectator from uh, looking into the screens um, gives you the feeling as you would uh, actually be sitting in the in the cockpit and it is just uh, amazing and um, now talking VR that already uh, brings me to the next important point of course uh, not everyone can afford the right equipment and hardware to run a smooth uh, VR experience or really um, just doesn't want to start with it before actually uh, know how to how to fly in this year's world. That brings me to the point of uh, head tracking and uh, head tracking is probably uh, one of the most important things uh, in a simulator like DCS World. Um, if you don't have head tracking you will be forced to move uh, the head of your pilot in the cockpit around either uh, with mouse, keyboard or uh, a button that you have uh, bound to your uh, joystick and I can already tell you that in a dynamic combat scenario where uh, the workload increases you just really uh, don't want to focus on pushing and uh, pressing buttons to move your head you uh, need to be able to look around freely to uh, look at your uh, instrument panels to look over your shoulder uh, look on your wings to the ground and so on and uh, this is uh, where we get to know track IR now, uh, Trek IR is um, the first step um, before you would enter the world of virtual uh, reality. It is basically this uh, small uh, device that you that you somehow uh, mount to the top of your of your screen. It um, basically uh, emits uh, some infrared uh, beams the, that are uh, picked up by a device that you uh, carry on your. On your head that can either be um, as you see here this uh, track clip uh, pro or what I'm using it's just a simple baseball uh, cap with those um, infrared uh, reflectors mounted on your head and um, the basic idea is that um, the, the device on your screen the track IR device um, emits those um, beams to these uh, reflectors on your head and converts them to a head movement that is then uh, picked up by the pilot's head in your DCS World uh, cockpit. It is really a, a great thing and it uh, makes your everyday uh, life in DCS World uh, much easier. 
Now with all of that being said, I quickly want to show you what I am using at the moment and why I am using the hardware like this. So you can see here my Logitech uh, X56 um, Rhino Hotas setup. As I said already before, I've been using mine now for many years, I believe uh, six or seven. I used it before uh, for Elite Dangerous, before I switched to uh, DCS World. It must have now uh, many hundreds of flying hours and so far it still works perfectly fine. Nothing, nothing broke. I have no idea where some of those bad uh, reviews are coming from um, and um, just try it out for yourself. I'm using mouse, keyboard and this gamepad here and just um, believe me when I say this, especially if uh, you start flying in VR at some point, you will, you definitely will need all of those, all of those buttons and switches and also uh, the keyboard and the mouse and the gamepad here, especially if you fly in VR, you won't be able to uh, see your controls because you have the headset strapped to your face. And uh, with, with a simulator like DCS World, it is really uh, the more buttons and switches and knobs you have, uh, the better. And you can just never, never have enough of those. Now on the top of my screen, you can also uh, see my uh, track IR, which also served me now for a very long time. Even uh, when I don't fly in VR, uh, I would uh, back up for this. And of course, from under the table, you can also see here my uh, Logitech... Um, Rudder pedals, as I said before, not not really the most high-end piece, but uh, they do they definitely do their job, and uh, it was a great uh, upgrade after I've been using the twist axis of my of my flight stick for a long time. Now, all of those uh, cables you see here. Um, they most of them come from my uh, uh, from my HP Reverb uh, G2 uh, virtual uh, reality headset, which I will now also uh, dedicate a few uh, minutes of uh, talking to. At the moment, the HP Reverb G2 is really the recommended VR headset for uh, simulators, which is uh, mostly due to its very high uh, resolution uh, per eye. That is especially important with uh, DCS World because um, you will have to be able to uh, read all the small uh, information that show on your uh, cockpit uh, screens and MFDs as well as uh, the small text that is uh, all around the buttons and uh, switches in the cockpit. While at the same time the HP Reverb compared to some uh, better, better VR headsets is still uh, somewhat uh, affordable. Also, let me already tell you that uh, setting up any kind of VR headset, but especially the HP Reverb G2 with uh, DCS World is really a, a pain in the ass. It is uh, as user, user unfriendly as the simulator itself. Um, it is not really uh, integrated. You will have to use uh, third party software. The Reverb G2 only works with uh, Microsoft uh, Mixed Reality portal uh, as well you will need uh, steam vr even if you are uh, not using the steam version of dcs world and yeah just the the general the general uh, setup process to uh, get a smooth vr experience out of dcs world um, in combination with that VR headset is uh, just very uh, frustrating and time consuming but once you manage to set it up and uh, you got it running and you got used to it the result is just really uh, mind blowing and as I said already uh, many times it's uh, basically unbeatable when it comes to uh, immersion. Another downside with VR is uh, obviously that you won't be able to see your uh, controls in front of you because you have the headset strapped to your face. You can really only see the uh, in-game in -game screen. So uh, in order to uh, use it efficiently, you will have to know exactly where your mouse is, where your keyboard is, where your hotas is, where all of your uh, buttons and uh, axes are and how to uh, use them efficiently, even if you uh, cannot see them. So uh, all of that takes many hours of uh, practice. 
So no, this was uh, certainly not me uh, making uh, making advertisement for uh, virtual reality. But uh, please, if you considered it, but uh, you were not sure about it so far, um, let me tell you if it's somehow possible for you. Uh, get it get it up and running and uh, get used to it and the result is just amazing. And as we approach the end of our video, I have one more very important thing to show you. You were probably already wondering from my talking if you are not really able to uh, learn DCS World from uh, everything that's provided um, in game, how else would you do it? Well, thankfully, DCS World has a very uh, active uh, community and uh, some of those um, community made um, documentations and um, other helpful content you can find uh, directly from the DCS World homepage. Now, before we explore that content a little bit, uh, let me show you here under um, downloads documentation you can find uh, very uh, interestingly the original uh, handbooks for for most of the flyable uh, modules in uh, DCS world now if we take for example here the the handbook of the A10C uh, warthog um, if we uh, click on download here it will uh, download and open a huge uh, PDF file which uh, already uh, took a while to load here. Um, this is this is essentially I don't know if uh, completely but certainly some parts of these of these official handbooks they are um, they are parts of the of the handbooks that also real uh, A10 A10C Warthog uh, pilots would have to have to study and uh, dig through. These uh, handbooks basically really uh, provide any single uh, bit of information about this aircraft that you could uh, possibly wish for. Uh, as you see here in the upper left corner, we have uh, 708 uh, pages of uh, PDF and it starts at the very beginning about the, about the history of the aircraft and it then uh, continues uh, over how it was uh, manufactured, what were the different uh, versions, what, what is his uh, mission, mission uh, profile, even, even detailed, detailed information on, on, the, on the certain um, production uh, parts, how the, how the engine is uh, constructed, as you can see here, it just, it really, uh, it has everything in it. And um, if you really uh, want to learn a certain, a certain aircraft the proper way with DCS World and you are lucky enough to have lots of time you can uh, of course use this uh, official or I would uh, say maybe a half official flight manuals of, of all of these uh, aircraft. Now uh, if you say yeah you would you would maybe want to have a manual like that but you don't need it um, that extremely detailed uh, if you go here to the support and the useful links you will end up here at the at the page of uh, different DCS world uh, content creators you will find some uh, discord servers some um, uh, different uh, forums names of uh, youtubers here who uh, have been doing a great job uh, also helping me uh, getting into a DCS world and of course they still do when I'm when I'm starting to learn a new a new uh, module and I just um, the in-game tutorials are just not enough anymore I would just uh, watch some videos of those guys here and learn it uh, that way but here a very important point is um, here you see uh, the chucks guides now what are the chucks guides the chucks guides are guides are basically a little bit um, a DCS world optimized versions of these flight manuals uh, that I that I showed you before they are if we uh, chose for example here the F16 Viper you can also see that well these PDF files are also also huge if we scroll uh, all the way down you have you have here uh, also page uh, 7 768 so uh, these also give you all the all the information with uh, beautiful uh, pictures and labels and and arrows and what does everything do in the aircraft 
Of course, in the beginning, it also starts a little bit with the common knowledge and the history and the basic mission profile and um, and so on and so on. But then here, for example, uh, the Chuck's guides always offer uh, great options for your uh, HOTAS mapping. So, uh, for example, if you if you have the Trustmaster Warthog stick uh, here, it shows you um, quite detailed what to map where and what is like the best uh, option. So this was now uh, not really not really hardware related, but I still uh, put it into uh, that video because it's also a very important uh, resources that in the beginning I also didn't really know that uh, they are there and just uh, keep in mind that you can find lots of help from the DCS World homepage. We are now uh, at the end of this video. I hope this was uh, helpful and see you next time.